Sizespace is becoming an absolute monster of a useful app, but here's all the important things you need to know about it. First thing you need to know is this is really good for doing a literature review. Now this is kind of like illicit, this is kind of like using Google Scholar, but using semantic search. So going in, kind of like consensus as well, where you go in, you type out some stuff and it will give you answers. Um, the one thing I really like about this is that when you're on this literature review tab, you've got either results from size-based papers, it means it goes out into the universe and sees what papers are out there. By universe, I mean the internet. Um, and also then we've got my library, which I really like. So if we go in here and we ask just a question, are beards better for health? Question mark. And then I'm gonna click OK Go. And what it's gonna do is go out and have a look at all of the published papers and give me kind of a bit of a summary. Now, up here, the first thing you get is an insight from top five papers reference. That's one thing I really like about this. You can click on it and go find that reference. Very, very cool. But uh, ultimately, this is the kind of take home message. And then we've got so much stuff that's just thrown in our face that it is a little bit overwhelming. First of all, we've got here, ask follow up questions. This is their co pilot. We'll talk about that later, stay tuned. Um, you've got loads of things that you can do. The important thing is this table here. This table here just tells you where it gets this information from. And we've got loads of different columns. We've got different columns. We can ask you that it only show papers with PDF or open access or top tier papers from the top journals and conferences. But ultimately, this is what we're gonna use to kind of like filter as a first pass all of the literature. Um, you can see that it's found 10 papers here. We've got insights, so this is an AI generated insight and then a too long didn't read and I love that where it's just like I've given up I don't like this at all here it is too long didn't read it but I need to know the important information and uh, I quite like this column here and then as we click across here we can add other columns we've either got like conclusions summarized abstracts so whatever you want to know about these papers these 10 papers you can add a column and it will go through and generate an AI kind of version for that paper. So let's have a look, let's just go to limitations. I'm interested in limitations, you can see it adds another column, and then we've got all of this that will get generated. It does take a little bit of time, but ultimately it is something that, uh, you know, will sort of get better and faster with time. And sometimes I find that if it doesn't do it straight away, I can go away, do something else on the platform, come back and those limitations will be populated. So that is how we use that first um, kind of, uh, tab on the page. Then we've got my library as well. You can ask the same question about my library. Now I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead here. Jump, jump, jump like a kangaroo. Um, here we've got library. So if I click library, these are all of my papers that I've uploaded. Um, I've got, uh, you know, papers, I've got notebooks, which is a new thing. Anyway, it's very, very complicated. We'll talk about that in a minute, but ultimately now we can ask from my library specific questions. This is about asking questions from multiple documents, something that a lot of research has been asking for, something like Doc Analyzer, I really like, and it is bringing that kind of functionality straight into size space. So that's how we use that. And then we've got all of these down here, you know, like different suggestions of, the one thing I think about this is that they have tried to put the things you need right up smack bang in your face when you need it, which means sometimes it can be a little bit confusing about where you can access certain things because certain functionalities just like pop up and you're like, oh, is that the same as the other one? And yes, it is, it is, but they just kind of throw it in your face and say, we feel like you find this useful here, which is sometimes a little bit uh, overwhelming. But here we go. The next thing, extract data. Now, this is where you can upload your own PDFs. We're gonna put that one in and then we upload that one file. Then we say, okay, what columns do we want? And what this is gonna do is put it into your library with these columns. You can also add your own column, um, but let's have a look, extract data. Then it will take you to your library. Your library will pop up and you can see now you've got this one at the top, you've got the too long didn't read conclusions and many, many more, essentially all of the things that you asked for. Um, it does get really sort of uh, busy very quickly, but one thing I like doing is just sort of focusing on that one column, the too long didn't read, or you know a summary of that paper to work out whether or not it's useful to you. This is kind of the backbone and the database from which you can use the power of size space which is my library. So that's where it goes. And that's that extracted data. The next thing we've got, ask questions on PDF. And this is their co-pilot. So you can access this from the sidebar and we'll go through that in a minute. You can see it's got the same icon, boonk, boonk. 
And uh, yeah, we've got my papers um, and let's upload a PDF and see what happens. Let's go with that one. It's gonna open it up and then we're gonna go to this kind of co-pilot page. So the first thing you can do is kind of use this uh, first page as uh, a way of sort of jumping into it. And you've got these pills that jump up. So I want to say, okay, summarize the introduction. It will go away and uh, yeah, I have a look at the paper and it will produce a summary of the introduction. There we are, we've got nice different bullet points that are completely cited. And if I click there, it will take me to where it actually talked about it. That's really cool, I do like that. And then, unfortunately, the high quality responses are hidden behind a paywall. How dare they want to earn money? from this useful tool. But I have found actually that the standard responses are actually pretty good if you don't wanna fork out the cold hard cash. Oh, you don't wanna make it rain on size space, that's absolutely okay. Is that even, a, am I allowed to say make it rain these days? I don't know. We've got so much we can do even in this co-pilot kind of world. First of all, we can highlight things and then we can explain text, summarize, get related papers. You can save it to your notebook, which is actually sort of like a new feature they've just added. That's super powerful. Stay tuned for that because they are trying to take market share away for some popular AI text generation tools. Okay, so if I wanted to know about this, for example, I can highlight this, which isn't always easy with PDFs. Um, and then I can ask questions about it. If you want more prompts, check out this, where this little tab pops up and you've got questions. You can also add my questions. You've got general ones. You know, it's just so, so much. I think once you've used this for a bit, you will sort of find your flow and your own kind of work process with SizeSpace. But initially, I really recommend you go in and you just start clicking around, upload data, see what happens, because it can get a little bit uh, confusing about what does what and where it is. Okay, here we are, we've got this button up here. Explain math and table. Okay, let's go with that. You can see it's taking a picture here, which is pretty cool, and it's gonna use that picture to talk about the figure of merit, which, oh my God, it actually, yeah, it's genuinely that. That that was worked way better than I thought it would considering that I cut off most of the equation. But this is my paper and yeah, that's the figure of merit and it gives you the performance of electrodes taken. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. Well done, I love this. It's once again, super useful, uh, but just work out how you want to use it. Power of Fraser. I don't use very often, I don't use paraphrase tools. I like to just kind of like use my own um, understanding of a certain thing I've read to paraphrase it myself. But if you do want help, you can use it here. As you can see, it's very, very similar to Quillbot. Okay, that's the first page. And we haven't even clicked much on the column on the side at the moment. This is how we use all of the tools on the side. Here we go, we're gonna speed run this a little bit because we've covered a little bit of them. But here we've got library. Library is everything you've uploaded with the columns of the AI generated text, which is really great. You can also import from Zotero, which is really great, which means that you, you'll have Zotero and all of your um, files on SciSpace synced up, which I really like because then you've got the power of SciSpace and the power of Zotero um, combined. Mwah, love it. Um, and that can be really useful for research. Okay, next thing, notebook. This is brand new, and I think it's something that uh, will upset quite a few AI tools in this industry at the moment. But ultimately, you've got two things you can do. Um, if you want to create like a little note for yourself, let's see, you can highlight something, and then you can say, okay, AI writer, like actually give me something, give me a, a paraphrase it, make it simpl simple, by simplifying, make it longer, translate it, fix grammar, summarize, write opposing arguments, write more depth. So you can start using this to come up with sections, maybe paragraphs initially, and then maybe sections if, you're, if you get used to this. You can pop this AI writer out in its own tab, which means that this is essentially a replacement for something like Jenny.ai or Yomu or something like that. Um, but it works very, very similar to those tools where you've got an AI writer. So you've got the AI commands where you select and then you can do AI writer um, or you've got autocomplete. So let's see down here, if I wanted to do this and then I click tab, you can see that we end up with this autocomplete. The research also highlights the potential of these transparent electrodes in, and then if you want to accept it, what do you do? You push tab again. 
I think that's what you do. Yes, double tab and it pops up. So this is now a notepad and a place where you can sort of start getting ideas together, start summarizing, start working with text using the AI generation tool. And I think this is gonna be um, a little bit of a, a shake up for other tools that only do this. We'll see going forward if they can survive uh, given that SciSpace is trying to steal some of their customers. And let's have a look at pricing, talking about stealing customers. For no money, you get quite a few useful tools and only $12 a month, but this one's billed annually. Um, you get, you know, best Copilot answers, customized Copilot answers, unlimited Copilot messages. So it doesn't cost too much. And you are actually getting not just sort of like, you know, the AI generation, the large language model for generating text. You've also got the library, you've got the integrations with Zotero. So in terms of like per dollar value, I think this could be one of the best deals that we've got at the moment. And then if you've got a uh, lab or university, you can even get your supervisor or your university to pay for it, which I love because they need to give you everything you need. Get them to pay for it. Yes, I got so angry about that. Okay, notebook. Yes, that's where we're at the moment. We're still on notebook. Let's go back to that. The one thing I like about this is that as you're sort of like generating, you know, as you're going through and you're like, okay, explain this to me. I'm gonna say explain text. This is in Copilot. So when we're in Copilot, we've asked it to explain text and then an answer pops up. That answer can be then shifted to your notebook, which means then you're not actually losing anything. Let's go down here and we can say save to notebook. Click there and then you can see that it saves it to my first notebook. It gives you the actual title of the paper or like, you know, what the, um, what it's actually sort of uh, talking about. This is the result from the AI question. And then we've got the actual bullet points here that it's come up with. So it's got vertical stratification. All of this gets saved into your notebook. Oh, that is not very good. I don't like that. Okay, so it's actually saved the entire thing, uh, which I don't, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, but we can get rid of that just by deleting it. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Oh, it's annoying, I have to do it all, but um, let's go through here. So this was the response that I got and you can see it's in bullet point form, but this is essentially how I create a literature review. I go through, I ask questions, I say, what is this about? What is this about? And I start just putting into bullet points. Once I've got it into bullet points, then I go and flesh out the actual bullet points in terms of full sentences, in terms of a paragraph, if it needs that much information. So this is shortcutting that little copy and paste and that kind of like, um, getting information from a paper and putting it into um, a document. And then we've got citation generator, which I've never used. I don't really like it, but paste the article title, URL, website, and then it creates a nice citation in whatever style you want. I think something like Zotero would do this for you anyway. I think this is a little bit out of scope for what I would use this for. Um, you've also got the scholarly paraphrasing tool. This, like I said, this is kind of like a Grammarly um, and a uh, Quillbot kind of replacement. So not too new, but I think that it's great that it's kind of in one space. And then you've got AI detector. Now I should do something in the future about using this and other AI detection. Um, that's definitely on my, you know, videos to make list, but uh, I, I, you know, AI detection is so complicated. I think even the big players have said that they can't really do it very well. So I'm gonna do a video later on about comparing all the different AI detectors and what they can and cannot detect. I need to update a video that I did about a year ago, but this is um, an AI detector from SciSpace. Then down here, we've got Chrome extensions, talk with us and then use on ChatGPT. Um, I use this uh, quite a lot on ChatGPT because it's just where I am most of the time. But uh, yeah, that is SciSpace. Oh my God, so much incredible. If you like this video, go check out this one, which is a recent one on how to use consensus AI. If you like this video, you'll love that one. Go check it out.